Hello everyone, this is Jan. Um, this video is just a quick discussion about some of the things that I have realized about our country's politics during this pandemic. Some of them might prove to be more controversial than others, while some of them are old realizations that were further validated by the current crisis. But uh, before I start, let me just say that I'm not here primarily to influence the way you think but to give you some perspective on our country's politics as a political science scholar. So let's start. Number one, um, I have realized that President Duterte was correct for suggesting that we transform our current system of government into federal parliamentary. A federal parliamentary system of government would have better prepared our country for this pandemic for two major reasons. The first one is a federal system would have um, allowed us to manage the pandemic more efficiently and effectively due to the shared responsibility and accountability between um, the central government and regional governments fostered by the system. Because in a federal form of government, regional governments are compelled to become more proactive in handling the situation in their respective regions because they are directly answerable to the people within their regions. Ang ibig pong sabihin nito, sa federal system of government, mas pressured ang regional governments at local governments to perform well dahil responsible sila sa kanilang mga regions. Um, sila rin ang sisisihin ng mga tao kapag nag-fail yung pandemic management nila. Hindi katulad sa kasalukuyang sitwasyon natin ngayon na bombarded ang central government ng responsibilidad tapos lahat ng sise sa kanila rin napupunta. Our pandemic strategy would have also become more efficient because a federal system promotes a more localized approach to pandemic management. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng localized approach? Ang ibig sabihin nito, tailor fit ang interventions ng bawat um, regional governments sa regions nila. Hindi lang sila basta sumusunod sa sitwasyon sa Metro Manila. This is just right because the situation of Metro Manila is different from the rest of the country. This doesn't mean na uh, in a federal form of government, wala nang trabaho yung central government. Um, in fact, um, nandyan sila para i-harmonize yung policies ng different regional governments such as in terms of border control, um, inter-regional transport, or um, trade among, uh, among other responsibilities. Nandyan din ang central government to promote coordination among regional governments. Kung mapapansin nyo kasi sa kasalukuyan, parang nahihirapang i-balance ng um, central government yung health and economic risk ng kasalukuyang pandemic. Um, malaking dahilan dyan yung sistema na meron tayo ngayon na unitary system. Kasi dahil sa unitary system na meron tayo ngayon, most of our economic activity happens inside Metro Manila and nearby regions. In fact, Metro Manila and region, nearby regions like Calabarzon and Region 3 make up 61.6% of our country's GDP, total GDP. That's more than half of our country's um, GDP. So, yung 61.6% na yun, nasa NCR lang, Calabarzon, and Region 3. Dahil dito, kapag bumagsak ang Metro Manila or if the government decides to, um, lock, uh, to lock down Metro Manila, apektado yung buong bansa dahil nga, masyadong centralized sa uh, Metro Manila yung economic development. Um, ang ibig sabihin nito, apektado lahat ng mga Pilipino. If we have a federal form of government, mas magkakaroon ng opportunities ang mga regions to develop their economies, providing jobs for their citizens. So, hindi nakakailanganin ng mga nasa um, ibang regions na pumunta sa NCR para lang uh, makahanap ng trabaho. Shifting to federalism would resolve yung congestion issue sa Metro Manila. Hindi na mangyayari ulit yung nangyayari ngayon na merong locally stranded individuals sa NCR tapos hindi sila makauwi sa provinces nila dahil nga um, may lockdown. Magkakaroon din ng sapat na pondo ang bawat regional governments to manage their situation dahil in a, under a federal form of government, um, regional governments or regions would be given 
um, fiscal autonomy. Ibig sabihin, magkakaroon sila ng kalayaan na i-budget yung pera nila, i-manage yung kita nila sa kanilang probinsya. So, makakapagpatayo sila ng mga infrastruktura. They could um, attract more investors. They could craft their own policies on how to develop their economies. So, mas magiging independent yung mga regions. Instead of always relying on Metro Manila or always relying on the government to come up with the policies na applicable sa lahat. In fact, an opinion piece from Bloomberg says that Germany's decentralized structure gives more say to federal states so it's harder to deprive regions of resources. Uh, meanwhile, in France, top-down system has favored mega hospitals in urban areas, closing beds elsewhere. So, ang sinasabi nitong um, opinion piece na to, uh, mas effective ang pag-manage ng Germany ng current pandemic situation nila and because of their decentralized form of government which is federal parliamentary as compared to France's um, unitary semi-presidential form of government. So I really hope that Filipinos, especially those who live outside Metro Manila, will start to realize and call for the amendment of our current constitution and call for the shift to a federal parliament form of government. Shifting to a federal parliamentary form of government is our best weapon against future pandemics. Now let's move on to some of my more controversial realizations um, during this pandemic. During this pandemic, it made me realize that the opposition really only cares about their political interest and not the welfare of Filipinos and of the nation. You know, otherwise, they would have already proposed doable solutions on how to balance our economic and health risks ra rather than merely antagonize the government. Ang nangyayari kasi ngayon, um, kung mapapansin nyo, very reactionary at disruptive lang ang approach ng opposition. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung leader nila, tawagin na lang natin siya sa pangalang Yellow Girl, ang bilis niyang mag-flip-flop sa mga policy pronouncements niya para lang makakontra siya sa gobyerno. So, yung mga policy pronouncements niya hindi pinag-isipan. Um, they merely go against the policies of the government, which is a characteristic of a non-thinking opposition, of an opposition that only cares about its interest. Worse is, this yellow girl, um, she advocates for the shutting down of the economy without thinking about the millions of Filipinos who will be affected by such policy, who could lose their jobs and be exposed to poverty as a result. Kasi kung, I mean, if they really care about the welfare of Filipinos during this pandemic, they would have um, sub suggested like middle ground solutions on how to protect our economy without compromising the health of the Filipinos. But they don't do that. All they do is to counter the policies of the government without even thinking about their consequences. So yun nga, hindi ako sang ayon dun sa um, sinabi ni Yellow Girl na we need to shut down the economy just because we have rising cases of COVID-19. Um, yung mga pronouncements niya, hindi talaga pinag-iisipan. Ang purpose lang niya, kumonta sa gobyerno at makabalik ang partido nila sa kapangyarihan. They do not care about you or the millions of Filipinos affected by the pandemic. They only care about their political ambitions. Um, this is something that we must remember come 2022 when we are about to elect our next leaders. Okay, so finally, for my last realization during this pandemic, um, now that we are getting more and more data about COVID-19, it has become clearer that the fear of the virus is being blown out of proportions for political reasons, apparently. Um, and I think it is our responsibility as citizens of this country to fight this fear with facts, with numbers, uh, with verified information. Um, and the fact is, as of August 17, around 97.6% of, uh, of our country's COVID cases are either mild or asymptomatic. 
ibig sabihin 97.6% ng mga COVID cases sa Pilipinas ay mild lang and asymptomatic. Hindi ganun kagrabe yung mga kaso. Pero hindi natin to nababasa sa media. All the media does is to um, amplify yung fact na our cases are rising. Um, they do not even highlight that we have one of the lowest case fatality rate in not just in Asia but in the world. We even have a lower case fatality rate than countries like South Korea and Japan. So um, I think this there are people who are uh, intentionally trying to spread fear among Filipinos and it, it, is, it is our duty to fight that scaremongering. Otherwise, it would gravely impact on our economy and in the future would affect you know, our livelihood as citizens. So I've mentioned that we have um, one of the lowest case fatality rate. We also have 97.6% of our cases are mild and asymptomatic. But we also have to look at um, some of the graver facts about this pandemic. The fact is, according to government data, adult joblessness in the country rose to a record high of 45.5% in July alone due to the pandemic. We are also currently in recession, just like most countries in the world. These are awful facts that we must also acknowledge and take into account when crafting our way forward in this fight against COVID-19. It is for these reasons that I am opposing any further lockdowns that would negatively affect our economy. Kasi over the long term, mas malaki ang magiging negatibong epekto ng bagsak na ekonomiya kesa sa COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen this in... Um, 1984 and 1985 where the country experienced recession which resulted in political instability. Ito kasi yung gustong mangyari ng mga taga-kabilang taga parlor. They want our economy to collapse because they understand that such economic instability will result in political instability. We should prevent that from happening as patriotic Filipinos, lalo na at kita natin ang uri ng leadership at pagkatao na meron sila. They would rather see Filipinos go jobless, become poor, just to topple the government, just to advance their political interests. Yun lang. Yun yung gusto nilang mangyari. And we have to prevent that. Rather than set aside politics for a while and unite with the rest of us in fighting this pandemic, they would rather ruin our livelihood para isisi natin ito sa gobyerno. Yun yung gusto nilang mangyari. They want the economy to collapse para yung mga tao magalit sa gobyerno. Pero kung titignan natin yung nangyayari ngayon, they're part of the problem. They're actually pushing um, the government to um, impose more lockdowns para mag-collapse yung ekonomiya natin at para magalit tayo sa gobyerno. See, that's the trap they're trying to set um, the government in. And it's something that we as um, nationalistic citizens must prevent. So we should start speaking out about this. So fortunately, because we have social media, um, we have all the information we need at our fingertips to have a more enlightened opinion. Kaya sana, kesa kaagad tayo magpapaniwala sa mga headlines ng media, na majority naman ay anti-government, let us use our critical thinking to question them and unearth the whole truth for ourselves. Kasi yung mga headlines na yan, yung mga soundbites, they only show part of the truth. They do not show the entire truth. And it is our responsibility to um, find those hidden truths ourselves. So, ayun lamang po. Um, by the way, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's called Jan Writer. J-A-N-W-R-I-T-E-R. Um, I post informative videos about Filipino society, culture, and politics. Um, you may also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Search nyo lang yung Jan Writer. So, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I'll see you again. Bye!